So first of all, this I think is my 16th Social Innovation Summit, and I continue to be amazed at the juggernaut this conference has become for good in the world. And so I just want to start by, um, by acknowledging uh, Zeev and Mel and the entire team at Landmark for what they have built. This is an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Now, I want to tell you something about this room. In this room are some of the most successful entrepreneurs and some of the brightest business minds in the entire world. And I tell you that not to make you nervous, just to let you know who's in the room. Okay. All right. So before we start talking, can I ask the audience a question? Yes. All right. So just a show of hands, how many of you started your business when you were four years old? All right, let me try another question. How many of you won Shark Tank when you were nine? Raise your hand. <laughs> let me try one more. How many of you introduced the President of the United States at a major international gathering when you were 11? Raise your hand. I thought it was a more impressive audience. <laughs> it's like a bunch of <laughs> Michaela, welcome to the Social Innovation Summit. Thank you. What is your exact title at Me and the Bees? I am the founder and CEO. Founder and CEO. Yeah. And I believe before we have our discussion, you have a short video you'd like to show. Oh, yes. So Usually I speak to kids, and they love videos. And I know you guys aren't kids, but I can't tell the difference. So <laughs> I have a little video for you guys. Well, can we show it now? This is the story of me and the bees. Like every good story, it's got a hero, a mission, and a happily ever after. I will be back on the job market in seven months, so I hope she is hiring. In the making. It all started in an exotic faraway land called Austin, Texas, where a little girl dreamed of changing the world. Meet Michaela. One day when she was just four years old, Michaela was stung by a bee, twice. After that, the sight of a bee made her weak in the knees, but her parents were wise and a plan they did devise. We encouraged her to overcome her fears by learning all about our honeybee helpers. Turns out bees are our littlest and biggest links in our food chain, and they need our help to stay busy, healthy, and productive. That's when Michaela discovered that a bee in need is a friend indeed. That's when Michaela decided to help save the bees. To make a difference in the world and protect our pollinators, I did what anyone would do. I opened a lemonade stand. Inspired by my great granny Hans lemonade recipe, I make lemonade sweet with honey that tastes good and does good. Sharing profits with organizations working hard to help our honeybees. Meet Me and the Bees, a social good lemonade company. That was the beginning of just the beginning. It's a deal. Since good stories are meant to be shared, Michaela took us on the road. Hitting events with the highest density of cultural leaders who could spread the word and inspire new believers. Now, Michaela is doing more than selling lemonade. She's leading a movement. And the buzz is building. With distribution stretching from coast to coast, new retailers popping up every day, and a growing list of dedicated partners, the future is looking beautiful. Because just like the honeybees, we are at our best when we work together. Let's make the next chapter of Me and the Bees even sweeter. Join the hive, spread the buzz, and become a bee lever. The end. <laughs> So before we talk about 
more about the company and about entrepreneurship and about the foundation you've created. Let's talk a little bit about you, because okay. you are a very, very special young woman, and I want the audience to get to know you a little bit more. Okay. So, we've seen in the movie, you've been with presidents, you've been on television, you've keynoted large conferences, you're running a company. Where do you get the confidence to do everything you do? Does anything make you nervous? Yes. <laughs> um, even when I was like around six and I would do little workshops while the parents are shopping at Whole Foods and different grocery stores, I'd take the kids and I had my little trifold folder and I had little facts about the bees. And what always made me nervous was when the kids I was teaching were older than me because I thought they already knew what I was about to say. And so my parents were like, no, doesn't matter how old you are, you always have something that you're able to learn. So uh, it doesn't matter how big the audience is or who I'm speaking to, I um, always remind myself that there's always something that you can learn. And that kind of makes me less nervous. <laughs> Even when you're on stage with thousands of people? Now, I do get a little nervous sometimes, but being nervous means you care about something. So the more nervous you are, it means that you're passionate or that you're excited or that you realize that whatever you're about to do has big potential and big opportunity. Were you nervous when you met the president? Yes, I was nervous when I went on Shark Tank. I, was ner I, I still get nervous, but um, I mean, everybody gets nervous. There's always going to be a time where I, I always call it nerve-sided because you're nervous, but you're also excited. So <laughs> that's what I called it when I was nine. <laughs> I'm nervous now, just interviewing <laughs> you. Okay, so you're a student still, right? Yes. And I know your parents, and I know they don't give you a free pass when it comes to doing homework and doing everything every other student has to do. Or chores. Or chores. <laughs> <laughs> or chores. So let's talk about balance. How are you able to handle being a full-time student, running a company, speaking at large gatherings, being a symbol for international entrepreneurship? How do you balance all of that? Okay, so just What's the background. What's your average day like? Well, I still have to go to school, so I still have to wake up at 6.30 and go to school, and then I go to Pretty Hard School, so I have like four round hours of homework if I can focus really well. And the time that I get to spend on my company is on breaks and during the weekend. So that's why this summer I have a lot of things planned. But for some background, uh, I two days ago I arrived in Austin because I had a conference called Brain Bar in Budapest. And so I went from Budapest because, and you know, it's funny, I don't know how I'm not like, like jet experiencing lag. jet lag, I'm not sure. But I went from Budapest to Austin and then I'm here and then when I get back, I have to start setting for my finals, which I think are on Monday, I think. <laughs> so it's, it is really hard. And then after that, I get to have like a, party with my friends because, yay, we finished finals and woohoo. But what's really hard about that is, again, finding a way to do all those three things. So we use technology. That's pretty much the way that I do it. So we have an online planner that has everything from when I'm doing a sleepover to when I have a test uh, to when I'm doing a presentation. And you know what's kind of hard is that sometimes we have to make sacrifices. So sometimes I'll have to push back a test because I have a presentation, or other times I'll have to uh, decline an invitation to a presentation because I have a big exam coming up. So it's definitely technology. It's a good online calendar where we can collaborate and bring different teams together. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> Amazing. Let's talk about the company a little bit. Okay. So you're growing this company, your product, um, right there, is now, uh, and hopefully people had a chance to sample because you've been having that lemon yes. stand out there all day, four different flavors. It's being sold in thousands of stores around the country. Have you experienced any challenges that you'd like to share with us in growing the company? Yes, I'd love to, I'd love to know a company that has grown without any challenges because that'll be a, that's a story to hear, but yes. <laughs> I definitely have experienced challenges uh, from the beginning. I guess my challenges was my challenge was getting stung by bees because I got stung by a bee in the ear, got stung by a bee in the neck, and that was that wasn't fun. So that's a challenge. But <laughs> even as I was growing, one of the challenges was 
finding stores. I had my wagon and I had my lemonade on my wagon and I would go to different stores in Austin and see if they'd carry my lemonade. And the challenge was saying, getting no from different stores of no, we're too small or we don't believe that uh, the product will sell. So that was a challenge. And today a challenge that we have is because we're scaling so quickly, because we're going so quickly, we have to find like co-packers that will be able to, that have like a minimum run that's small enough, but also allow us to grow. So we've had to change where we're making the lemonade multiple times. And that's a challenge because we have to make sure that we can make the lemonade. So, there's, I mean, I can think of plenty more, staying on top of trends in the market, uh, balancing. <laughs> like, like there's, just, there's always challenges. There's, that's something that you have to encounter. And then I guess something that I've learned is that you have to learn from those challenges. So instead of like staying on top of those trends, you could make new ones and then not have to worry about that. So yeah. The... <laughs> So staying on top of trends in the market, the things that an average 14-year-old thinks about. <laughs> so your company has a social mission. Yes. You believe it's important to save the bees. Why? OK, so in case you didn't know this, which I didn't when I was four and I got stung by the bees. Um, <laughs> Because initially, I hated the bees. I didn't like the bees. I didn't like anything that buzzed. I didn't like any insects. So I didn't like the bees. And my parents said, OK, before you're afraid of bees, do some research. And I remember watching like an animated video to Mozart's, or what, what's the song that's, that's like a bee? Yes, that, that. <laughs> Thank you. So I listened, I watched the animated video that was to that music that said, like, without the bees, you can't have your strawberry jam on your toast, or you can't even have the cheese on your cheese pizza. And that's kind of when it clicked for me of why should I be afraid of the bees when, A, they're really important, and B, they're dying at a 40% decrease every year. And so, I became really interested in them. And they, that was the kind of thing that I would, that was the reason why I built bee gardens with my dad and, um, in, our, in our front yard. And we made sure that we planted enough flowers and that we were keeping up with the garden. So that was kind of the thing that instantly had me intrigued. I would, if I saw a t-shirt with the bee on it, I'd say, can I get that one? Or if I saw a necklace that had like a drop of honey. So, that's kind of what started my interest for them. And um, they pollinate one out of every three bites of the food we eat. And going back to the cheese, like cheese is dairy. Dairy is made by cows. Cows eat alfalfa. Bees pollinate alfalfa. So there's really long links to food that we eat. And then it's not only the food that we eat, it can be the clothes that we wear. So I. I just realized how big of an impact they make on our daily lives and our ecosystems, and um, that's that's why they're important. Is there is there anything? <laughs> thank you. Is there anything people in this room can do to help you save the bees? Yes. So, for starters, how many of you have a garden or somewhere you keep plants? Okay. Now, how many of you have like annoying bugs that get into those gardens and that can kill the plants as well? Okay, so a lot of the times, farmers and even regular people in their gardens will use pesticides to keep those annoying bugs out. And that's one of the key factors that's contributing to CCD, or colony collapse disorder. And so one way that you can help save them is instead of using pesticides, you can use bee-friendly ones. Or you can, there's like beneficial insects even that um, not all insects are predators, not all insects are pests, but these are predators for those annoying bugs that kill your plants. Another way you can help save them is, of course, by doing research, sharing your research. You can support by buying local honey and also purchasing my lemonade and other uh, products that help save the bees. And um, you can, well, there's a lot of things you can do. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to, yeah, not use pesticides. So, and support the foundation yes, that you created. Yes, exactly. To help save the bees. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so you're part of something called Gen Z, correct? Yes. What does Gen Z care about? What does your generation care about? What's important to you guys? Okay, so 
like many of the presentation, many of the presenters said in the past, we're a definitely very social oriented generation. So we're more likely to buy products that make it easier for us to support a cause. Uh, we're native to technology, so we will often use technology to solve daily problems or integrate technology in things we do every day. And we have very large voices, and through social media, we're able to share whatever uh, issue that we want to help solve, and we're able to share whatever we're passionate about. So, I mean, I'm able to use those all those factors in running my company. And especially when teaching other Generation Z kids on how, either how to grow a company or how to start a company, um, it's the free logo makers that are online. It's the social media that they can use for marketing instead of having other people to do it. So pretty much we're born into having all these tools that can help us start a company. And a lot of people aren't taking advantage of it. Like instead of playing video games on their phone, they could be finding a way to make a logo or to design a website. So that's what I think is interesting, and I think we should use that to our advantage. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Who are some of your heroes in life? Heroes. Other than your parents. Your parents are heroes. Yes. And I know that. Yes. But beyond your parents, who are some of your heroes? Who do you look up to? So definitely my parents. Big shout out to them because they were the people who, my mom, yes. <laughs> my mom had her own marketing firm. My dad worked at, my dad works at Dell. He does finance and operations there. And so they, when I said that I wanted to find a way to help save the bees all year round, they were the people who, even though they had no experience in the beverage industry, helped me make that happen. So that's the first one, of course. Of course. And um, another one of my inspirations is my great granny Helen, because she was the one who sent me this like 1940s old tattered, um, ripped up cookbook from um, her kitchen that had her favorite recipe of flax lemonade. So that's how I got the original recipe. Uh, my other inspirations are other kid entrepreneurs and other people who are defining what it means to be like the average entrepreneur and that are um, finding ways to solve problems and do good in the world and grow company as well. So those are, those are my inspirations. There's a lot of people that I'm inspired by, but usually they'll fit that characteristics. They're doing something that they enjoy doing and they're finding a way to, I guess, contribute to a cause. Does anything keep you awake at night? Yes. Do you worry about anything? Yes. You know, sometimes when I'm sleep, like, I'm not sure if anybody else does this, but you're in bed and then a bunch of things come to your mind and then you have to go down and type it all up. Or you know by the time you wake up, you're going to forget it. Or it's just going to, you're going to keep on thinking of it at, at all night, not be able to go to sleep. So sometimes I'll have these random business ideas, like that are random. And if I don't, like, sit down and write it, out, then I won't be able to go to sleep. So that's one of them. And uh, what are other things that, oh, my brother, when he listens to music, he, see, so he <laughs> had, my, my younger brother, Jacob, he's 11. He's actually the one who came up with the ginger flavor for lemonade. Uh, he goes to sleep with the radio on. And I can't, like, I can't do it <laughs> because I, when I go to sleep, it has to be pitch dark and quiet. So that's some, one thing that sometimes keeps me awake at night. Uh, <laughs> but that's it. All right, this is the last question, and it's a okay. two-part question. Okay. Of all the advice that you've gotten in the world about business or anything else, what's the most important piece of advice you've ever gotten? Okay. And I know you, and I've seen you on television, teach entrepreneurship to other kids and you know quite a bit about entrepreneurship because you're years and years into your company already. <laughs> so what piece of advice would you give to anybody who wants to start a business? Okay. There's two parts to that question. So, well, I think of what the most important piece of advice someone's given me, also what the most important piece of advice I'd give to other people, which is to dream like a kid because I feel like kids have the best mentality for entrepreneurship or uh, really for anything. And so the reason why I say that, <laughs> the reason why, and congrats to Phoenix, because I really love what he did and I'm really excited for next year when they have those kids coming here because I think that's amazing. But the reason why I say that is because I, well, first of all, I love ice cream, I love any dessert. 
right? And so when kids, a lot of kids love ice cream too. And when kids want ice cream, they're gonna do whatever it takes to get the ice cream. And their mentality is, I'm gonna get that ice cream no matter what. But when parents want ice cream, they will, not, not even parents, just when adults sometimes want ice cream, <laughs> they think about the taxes that are gonna be added to when they buy the ice cream. Or like the gas mileage to get to the ice cream store. Or like, or like the calories that they're gonna have to count when they eat the ice cream. So they, they kind of think about the challenges that are in the way initially instead of possibly the end result of, of uh, the ice cream. And so what I would say is when running a company or being a student or whatever you do, an author, all, you always want to, of course, think of the things that you're going to have to encounter and you're, of course, going to have to face challenges, but also dream like a kid, think, have the kid mentality and uh, focus on the end product or what your goal is as well. And then the most important piece of advice that I received was, so I do this thing where when I go to presentations, I'll ask people what's like in a piece of advice that you'd give me. And so I definitely have a lot to choose from. Um, but one that I've gotten was, well, people have said it's great what you're doing to start young, so always start young. Uh, people have, oh, I'm trying to, Think. What's the most important piece of advice someone has given me? Mm -hmm. Well, use tech, but I, I do that. But so, <laughs> um, did you get advice from the president? Did he give you any advice? I'm, he said, like, keep on doing what you're doing, and I like what you're doing. Has your Shark Tank mentor given you any advice? Definitely, Damon? yes. Uh, I mean, and he's taught us how to get into different stores and with different contacts we should be in touch with. But what is a, a piece of advice? <laughs> I'm having a brain fart right now. <laughs> um, well, let me tell you this. Wait, I got, I got it. I, got, I just have okay. to think of, because I have a lot to choose from. Uh, what's an important piece of advice? Um, to one thing that I thought was really important was to make a unique product. And I always say this, and I got it, I don't even remember who told it to me, but you have to make a unique product, and you definitely have to make, and make sure that there's no other products like it. Uh, because there can be, oh no, I have a better one. One, <laughs> okay, so there's an agency called Team One, and we had to go through a really big name change. We had to change from B Suite, which was the name that we had on Shark Tank, to Me and the Bees, which is the name that we have today. And initially, I didn't want to change my name because B Suite was a name that I had come up with when I was four, and it was my favorite thing ever, and I thought that was what created my brand, that was what created my company. And then I realized that it doesn't matter what my lemonade is, or it doesn't matter what the name of my company is, it's still going to be my lemonade company. And so I feel like the most important piece of advice that I've gotten is that it's not the product, it's not the, it's not the product you sell, but the story you tell. That's what he said. And well, he said great. that it doesn't matter what happens, it's always your mission, it's always your story that's going to be the deciding factor of the company. And so that's kind of what I was reminded as, that's what I was reminded by when I was changing the name, and that's what motivated me to take my name change and use it to our advantage. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> you are an extraordinary young lady. Thank you. We thank you for saving the bees. And I can tell you that if for any reason this lemonade business doesn't work out, <laughs> you may have a future in stand-up comedy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you.